for us to shift on over. Hybrid learning blends online and in-person instruction. All students whose parents choose the hybrid learning option will attend in person two days a week with remote instruction on the days that they are not in school. So that we can allow for social distancing, we will be organizing our students into two separate rotating groups. One group, group A, will return on Mondays and Tuesdays, while the other group, group B, will return on Thursdays and Fridays. On the days that either group of students are not in the building, they will continue with remote instruction through Google Classroom. Buildings will be closed to all students on Wednesdays because all facilities will undergo thorough cleaning in between student groups. Please know that we are creating the in-person schedules to ensure that families are cohorted together, including arrangements that exist amongst multiple families in order to help address transportation and health concerns. For tonight's agenda, again, we're gonna cover a lot tonight. We'll go over what will change as we undergo this transition. We'll explain what we mean by phased return dates. We'll review the important things that we can do as a team, families together with our schools to protect one another. We'll show you all the new processes we have in place to protect our community so that you can feel confident in your decision, whatever that, whatever that may be. We'll review important changes you need to know about arrival and dismissal. We'll also get into some Q&A as time allows and show you the actions you need to take to let us know about your decision to send your child to hybrid learning or to remain 100% remote and finally, we'll show you where you can access all of this information after tonight's event. To all of our parents, if you know of any other FA families, please help share this information with them. We wanna ensure that every family has all the information that they need to make the decision that works best for them. And so we're really just asking for your help to please share this information with other families in our community. You can text them a link to our web a link to our webpage, foundationacademies.org. Share it from our Facebook page, um, from our Instagram account. Truly, every bit helps. Now, if you do have questions tonight, um, as we go along, do you see the link that's on your screen? <laughs> Please screenshot it or take a note of the link, or excuse me, or take note of the link you see right now. We'll also send this out earlier in the afternoon. If you're joining us from a phone, I can read off the link itself. It is bit.ly forward slash P A. R E N T Q U S T I O N S two zero two one. Again, use this link to send us your questions. We'll post any follow up to our website with this presentation tomorrow. I'll give us about 15 more seconds to screenshot if we haven't had the chance and then we'll keep on moving forward. And with this, I think we're good to slide forward. So what things are the same? What things are different? To begin, you might be wondering what things are the same and what's just gonna be different in this new phase. The good news, is that your child's advisor and teachers will stay the same. They'll still have the same classmates. They'll still have the same high quality education. They'll still get to enjoy breakfast and lunch at school. And all of your child's clubs and afternoon activities will remain online. There are gonna be some things that are different though. 
the thing, uh, the changes that we've made to ensure that we comply with CDC health guidelines are to keep our entire school community safe. And so, for example, uh, as we return to our buildings for hybrid learning, we're going to do uh, so in a phased approach so that students are able to get acclimated to the environment in smaller groups. We'll get into the details of that in a moment. Next, some students will attend in person and online, while some will be online only. And for the remainder of this school year, all students from K to 12 will receive breakfast and lunch at no cost. One of the biggest changes is that all students K to 12 will, will remain in one classroom for the majority of each school day and will only interact with those same students while on campus. Teachers will change classes as needed and they'll sanitize the area before departing. We made this decision so that we can prevent potential COVID-19 spread and to be able to contact trace if needed. In addition, transitions between classes have been minimized for all grades K through 12. When students need to report for PE, staff will ensure that they follow social distancing guidelines. To ensure social distancing in the restrooms, students will have scheduled breaks and the facilities at each campus have been reduced in capacity to allow for social distancing to be followed correctly. Another big change is our arrival and dismissal process. We'll also go over this in detail later, but in a nutshell, we've worked out a process that will protect everyone's safety. We're gonna need your help and cooperation to ensure that it all goes smoothly, as smoothly as possible. And lastly, all students K to 12 will be keeping their belongings with them all day in their classrooms, either in a book bag or nearby. At the high school, students will not be using their lockers. For our phased return dates, uh, next we're gonna be moving into the timing of our plan of return, which is gonna be using some phased return dates. As we mentioned earlier, we'll be organizing students whose parents choose hybrid learning into two separate rotating groups for their return to our buildings. All other students whose parents choose to remain 100% remote will attend online only. So now you may be wondering, okay, if I choose hybrid learning for my child, how will I know what group my child is in? Is it gonna be group A or is it gonna be group B? It's a great question. The answer is that we need to hear from you. We need to hear from our families about what decision you're making on either attending hybrid learning or remaining 100% remote. Um, and we need to know that information as soon as possible. With that information, we can then create our in-person schedules based on who's indicated that, indicated that they will definitely be coming back to school in person. So please be sure to fill out the survey. We'll share it at the end of this presentation. For now though, we're gonna explain how the groupings will work so that you can understand the overall plan. The first phase of return will consist of just kindergartners and ninth graders because these grades are both brand new to their respective campuses and they will need the most support with regard to orientation. This phased approach gives our students the space and time to learn the way, uh, to learn their way around the, uh, around the school building before all of our other grades return. The first day of hybrid learning is Monday, April 12th, 2021. And we'll begin with the first group of students, group A, who will attend every Monday and Tuesday. For this week, the only students that will be in our buildings will be kindergartners and ninth graders. Now on Wednesday, April 14th, the school buildings will be closed for deep cleaning 
and all students will attend classes remotely online. On Thursday, April 15th, the kindergartners and ninth graders in group B will attend in person on Thursday and Friday. The students in group A from Monday and Tuesday will attend online in Google Classroom. On the next slide, we'll get into how we're bringing in more of our grades each week. Before we move on though, we wanted to make one quick note about spring break, which ends just before we return on April 12th. If your family is gonna be traveling out of state or gathering with others who are outside of your immediate household, we do ask that you please quarantine according to CDC guidelines in order to help protect the health of our entire school community. If this sounds like you, please reach out to us and let us know so that we can help you to plan this accordingly. Now on Monday, April 19th, 2021, that's when we'll welcome in grades K, two, five, eight, nine, and 12 into the rotating groups. This is gonna continue our phased approach by adding the most experienced students at each campus. Group A is gonna attend Monday through Tuesday, and then group B will attend Thursday through Friday. Beginning on Monday, April 26, 2021, all grades will be welcomed back into our buildings in their respective groups. The rotation of group A on Mondays and Tuesdays and group B on Thursdays and Fridays, that's gonna continue for the remainder of the year. We planned it this way just to allow two weeks of phasing students in and also to provide the opportunity to refine systems and procedures. Now, some of the top questions that we keep hearing are, how are you gonna keep my child safe? And what can I do to help? Every morning at five, at 5 a.m., uh, we'll be sending a health screener survey via email to all in-person students and staff. This is required by everyone who will be in the buildings that day. It's just a few questions and should only take a few minutes to complete. We've made it mobile friendly so you can do it on your phone. We ask that you please answer those questions honestly and please complete it before you leave the house in the morning. If you, your child, or anyone in your household has symptoms of COVID or even thinks that they may have been exposed to COVID, please take the health screener and indicate those symptoms. Stay home and please call the school nurse. She can then provide you with some next steps. Also, also, all persons in the building must wear masks and will have their temperature checked. And all students and staff will practice six feet of social distancing at all times. Any students or staff who develop symptoms during the day will be moved to an isolation area and cared for by the school nurse until they're able to leave. Now, in addition to the things that we are doing here at Foundation, there are things that you can do at home to help keep us, to keep everyone safe. First, please remember to take your health screener every day and answer honestly. And keep your child at home if they or anyone in your household is ill, even if the symptoms are mild. You can take your child's temperature every morning. Um, if their temperature is 100.4, degrees or higher, just let us know in the health screener, stay home, and again, contact the nurse. Ensure your child has an appropriate mask that fits properly and that they are comfortable wearing it. Teach your child uh, proper hand hygiene, such as washing hands before and after eating, as well as after blowing their nose, coughing, or sneezing. And then lastly, give your children an idea of what six feet looks like. Uh, it's about the length of a three of a three seat sofa. If your student has asthma, 
you must have an asthma action plan completed by their doctor, and we must also have it on file at school. If your student needs a rescue inhaler, we also need a, medica uh, a medication administration form filled out by their doctor. The inhaler must be in its original packaging and have the pharmacy label with student info on it. Due to COVID restrictions, there will be no nebulizer treatments. All students on nebulizer treatments require an inhaler and a spacer in addition to medication administration form uh, filled out by their doctor. So again, please ensure that your student, that your child has the appropriate paperwork on file. Next, we're gonna review what safety protocols we've put in place uh, to help protect our school community while folks are on campus. First, we'll talk about masks. All students, uh, all staff, all visitors are required to wear a face mask, a face covering, um, unless doing so would inhibit that individual's health or if the individual is under two years of age. Luckily, we don't have any high schoolers that are under two years of age. Please come to school wearing your mask. If you need guidance on selecting a mask, please visit the CDC guidelines that are linked here. Again, we're gonna share this presentation out tomorrow so you can have access to all the information that's here. Gators and baklavas should not be worn. If you have a face shield, you can wear it, but it must be worn in addition to and not instead of a mask. Again, masks are required to be worn all day with the exception of eating meals. We will be supplying two reusable masks to each student. You can bring your own masks if they fit properly and if they adhere to the guidelines. We're also gonna have some spares on hand to replace lost, uh, broken, or dirty masks. Next up, we'll talk about hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is another really important step to protect our school community. And so we've stationed touchless hand sanitizer dispensers at all entrances, near restrooms, and in all classrooms uh, from grades three to 12. All students and staff will use hand sanitizer before they enter any new room. And lastly, you know, it may sound rudimentary, but how many of us really know how to thoroughly wash our hands? The guideline is to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds uh, or about the time that it takes to hum the happy birthday song to yourself from beginning to end twice. Now to be respectful of your time tonight, we're not gonna play this video now, but please do check out this quick one minute video that uses paint to demonstrate proper hand washing techniques. You'll be able to click on it when we share this information out following this session. Next up, we're gonna talk a little bit about social distancing. To allow for appropriate social distancing while on campus, we've updated our campuses with markers, signs, and reminders in indoor and outdoor spaces. All student entry and exit will be coordinated by grade through separate doors, which again, we will go over that in greater detail when we talk about arrival and dismissal. All students, um, or excuse me, all classrooms are limited in capacity, and we have limited transitions between classrooms for all students from K to 12. This means that at our high school, students are gonna remain in their, in their homeroom each day and will only interact with the same group of students while on campus. Students are gonna be participating in the majority of their classes via online learning with an instructor who can support as needed. This safe single classroom setting, that's what's gonna allow for students to be with their peers while they engage in online learning. All students uh, will also have carefully managed, socially distant transitions for PE, which will be held outside when the weather permits. Students will keep their belongings, belongings with them all day. 
Students in grades nine through 12 will not have locker access and they can carry a backpack if needed. We've also built in times for socialization throughout the day, including during breakfast and lunch when all students will be eating in their classrooms. Now we put some photos up here so that you can see what we're talking about. Um, and these photos, they show what our classrooms will look like when students return. You'll notice that the desks are spaced apart. And in some cases, there are desks or tables in between to help uh, indicate spacing. You may now be asking, well, what about the meals? Um, so let's talk about breakfast first. All students, uh, K through 12, they're gonna be provided with meals at no cost for the remainder of the 2021 school year. Breakfast, it is an important part of every scholar's day. And so to ensure that all students have sufficient time to eat in the morning, we are incorporating a breakfast block into the schedule at all campuses. Once a student is cleared to enter the building in the morning, they can head to their classroom and take an individually packaged breakfast to eat at their desk. We've also incorporated a lunch block into every scholar's schedule where they'll receive uh, an individually packaged meal that they can eat at their desk while they socialize with their peers. The lunch block, uh, it's gonna allow students to be able to use the bathroom, to wash their hands, uh, and to ensure that their desk is clean with disinfectant wipe before and after the lunch period. During breakfast and lunch, students will not share food or utensils and they will continue to follow social distancing. Uh, they, will, they will wear a mask unless they're eating and they'll also hand sanitize both before and after meals. Uh, let's slide over to bathrooms. Now at the high school campus, each classroom, we're gonna have a, a scheduled 10 minute bathroom break between blocks and students can also use the restroom as needed. Students will follow social distancing while they transition uh, to the bathroom and will also use the bathroom on the, floor uh, on the floor closest to their current classroom. We'll have staff there to help monitor the restroom capacity and ensure that students follow safety procedures. And while students get reacclimated to in-person education, staff uh, will escort students to the bathrooms to help reinforce social distancing and proper hand hygiene. Now to help keep all of our bathrooms extra clean, we've hired an additional custodian at each campus whose main role is to continue to clean all bathrooms several times during the day. As you can see in the photos, we've also limited the capacity for each bathroom to ensure that students can maintain proper distancing while in the restroom. Students will hand sanitize before using the restroom and they'll also wash their hands after using the restroom. Before they re-enter the classroom, then they'll use hand sanitizer from the touchless hand sanitizer station because we wanna make sure that everyone is really, really safe. Uh, for this, we'll slide over to physical education. Uh, phys ed, that's gonna take place outdoors whenever the weather permits. During inclement weather, it'll take place in the gym. Students will remain socially distant and they will continue to wear their masks. Signage, it'll be placed in all PE areas to delineate six foot distance. Students and staff will avoid sharing meals wherever possible and any PE equipment used will be sanitized daily. Every student will wash or sanitize their hands before and after PE, and also before re-entering their classroom. In terms of indoor air quality and increased ventilation, uh, we're gonna just talk a little bit about how we've improved the air inside of our facilities. Uh, now to improve this air quality and ventilation at our schools, we've upgraded all of our HVAC systems at both campuses and we've installed air scrubbers in every classroom. 
These high grade air scrubbers have multiple levels of filtration, which are proven to reduce 99.9% .9 of airborne virus particles and can capture and remove microscopic, microscopic particulates from the air. And when the weather and facility permits, we'll also open the windows to increase fresh air ventilation. As we've mentioned throughout this presentation, we've also ramped up our cleaning and sanitation processes. And so we'll quickly review those items and the why behind them. First, by cohorting our students into two groups, we're gonna have two opportunities for the buildings to, uh, to be deep cleaned in between student groups. Our amazing facility staff will be deep cleaning everything. And we mean everything on Wednesdays and again over the weekend before Group A students return on Monday. We've also installed touchless hand sanitizer stations at every entrance, outside of every bathroom, and outside of every classroom. Students and teachers will not share materials and water fountains at all campuses will be closed with the exception of the water bottle uh, refilling stations. Our custodial staff will also use an, electro an electrostatic sprayer to disinfect surfaces daily at campuses, at all campuses. And each campus will have an additional custodian whose primary focus will be to clean all of the bathrooms several times each day. Lastly, if a student or if a staff member shows symptoms while at school, the area they were in will be cleaned and sanitized immediately. If indicated, we will follow the New Jersey Department of Health guidelines for closing a classroom or school. Now, as we're nearing the end, uh, we're gonna shift over to the arrival and dismissal processes. And this is one of the most important pieces of our return to our buildings. We've carefully prepared new arrival and dismissal processes that protect our students, our staff, uh, and our families' health and safety. So while they may look different, we still have the same goal in mind. We know these changes will take some getting used to, and so that's why we want to be sure to review these updates with you now so that everyone is clear on how things will go as we begin our phased return. We ask for your patience and understanding as we get used to these new processes together. So without further ado, let's dive on into it. To help us stay organized, we will be using one tool every single day. This one is the health screener that we talked about earlier that everyone coming to the buildings must complete every single day. Every morning, Everyone due to report to the building that day will be sent an email at 5 a.m. from the email address healthscreener at foundationacademy.org. By default, this will go to your student's foundation email. Again, by default, this will go to your student's foundation email. And so for all of our ninth, for all of our ninth to 12th students, right? high school students can complete that health screener themselves. Now to expedite uh, any student's arrival process, as they complete their screener survey, they can take a screenshot of that result to just present it to staff upon arrival. In order for any student to enter the building, he or she must have, completed, must have a completed health screener and get a green check mark to be cleared to enter. If you can't screenshot, or if you forgot to do so, staff can look up students as they arrive, but it will definitely help speed up the process a great deal if you can screenshot that result and have it ready for staff who can then check it at arrival. No one, and we mean no one, is going to be admitted to class on either campus without a health screener survey every day. No exceptions. And we're holding a firm line there because we do, again, want to make sure that every single one of our students, every single one of our staff members, every single one of our families is safe. 
Now, what if you're a student um, or what if you or someone else in your household? Um, what if someone's just feeling sick? This is something that's really important for every single person to understand. Um, so please take a moment to read the red text here. I'll read it aloud as well. If you, your student, or someone in your household are not feeling well, even if the symptoms are mild, take the health screener survey and indicate your symptoms honestly. Please do not come to school. Next, contact the school nurse and she will provide you with some next steps. So for example, uh, if your student is well enough, they may be able to learn remotely for that day. Uh, the school nurse is the key person to be in contact with as soon as possible. So again, please take your survey honestly, um, indicate your symptoms, stay home and contact the school nurse. Of course, you know, it could just be a mild head cold. Those happen all the time, even in the time of COVID. However, we all have just got to be extra vigilant so that we can protect one another. Now for arrival at the high school campus, um, to follow social distancing guidelines, uh, we will be utilizing separate entrances by grade level. The entrances, they will be labeled with signage. So nine and 12, uh, those grade level students, as well as students who need ramp access, they're gonna use the main entrance on Arch Street. It's the blue dot on the map that's on the right. And for our 10th and 11th grade students, they'll use the Grand Street entrance. It's marked with a green dot in the map on the right. Now, if your student will arrive after 8 a.m., they must ring the bell at the main entrance on Arch Street. The school secretary will sign the late student into the late log, check their health screener status and temperature, and will also check for a mask. Upon entering, students will be greeted by a staff member who will check their health screener survey status. Students are going to enter one at a time to have temperature and mass checks, sanitize their hands, and take a breakfast if they desire. All students will immediately proceed to their first period class using the nearest stairwell. And students who have temperatures of 100.4 degrees or higher will be escorted to the isolation room and then we'll contact the parents or guardians to come pick them up immediately. So for that, please be sure that we have good contact information so that we can reach you. Next up, we can uh, talk a little bit about dismissal. Students will be dismissed in intervals by floor using separate stairwells and doorways. Leadership team members will be stationed on each floor to ensure social distancing is maintained and all procedures are being followed as instructed. All students must be picked up on time and should be out of the building by 3.45 p.m. each day. So what does this mean that we need to do now? So now we've gone over all of these details about what hybrid instruction is gonna look like. Essentially, we just need to hear from you. Um, as we said in the beginning, every family must, take, must make that decision that is right for them. And so after hearing about our plans for hybrid learning, we need, to let, we need you to let us know about your plans. Will you send your child to attend hybrid instruction? Or will you keep your child 100% remote? Please use the link on your screen to take our parent survey and let us know what your plans are. The link for those who may not be able to see it is http colon backslash backslash bit dot ly backslash fahybr 
I D. Altogether, that's F A hybrid. I'll say it one more time if you weren't able to catch it. Again, the link is HTTP colon backslash backslash B I T dot L Y backslash F A H Y B R I D. And again, all together, that is F A hybrid. If you do plan to send your child to in person learning and have a need for uniform pieces, we've also included a place for you to indicate that on the survey form. So please take this survey as soon as possible. And as a matter of fact, you can just take it right now while you're thinking about it, um, because your input is going to help us make the best possible plan for our families as we transition together to hybrid learning. All surveys are due by Friday, March 19th, 2021. So again, please take a few minutes tonight to just complete this information and let us know what your plans are. Now, thus far, I haven't seen any questions come through, um, but if you didn't get a chance to, uh, to submit a question before, we're going to reshare the link here. So again, the, the link is bit.ly forward slash P-A-R-E-N-T-Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N-S-2021. I'll say I'll share that one more time. Again, the link is bit dot l y forward slash p a r e n t q u e s t i o n s two zero two one. Now, as of that link, uh, since we shared that at the start, um, we haven't seen any things come in. I see a question that just came in. Can our students use electronics or phones? So I'll give us a second just to get a few more questions in. To the question of can our students use electronics or phones, um, we know that at home some students have been using their phone in addition to their laptop um, because of the fact that internet speeds could be slow, the computer could be running uh, rather slowly as well. Um, what we've done at the high school is we've made sure that we've updated our Wi-Fi connection so that folks wouldn't need to use that phone um, in the school building. But also we haven't had folks in the building for the past school year. Um, and so we truly don't, we're not gonna know how, how strong and how reliable that internet connection is gonna be until we have folks back in the building. Um, so what I can say is that following last year, yes, the same policy applies of, like, of us not using cell phones, but we're also recognizing that we need to be agile. We need to reflect and adjust based off of what happens. Um, and so if the Wi-Fi connection at school is not working well, if computers do continue to run slow, then that's a, that's a space where we step back, we reflect, we adjust and say, well, what, what do we need to do differently? Do we need to adjust policy um, so that students can navigate? I see a question of why is the school day longer for in-person but shorter for remote? Um, for that reason, it's purely for, this, uh, it's purely for that space to transition to those gym period classes. We also wanted to make sure that students, since we're bringing folks into the building, that they have space to connect and interact and engage with one another um, within their classrooms. Because we're asking folks to come in, we wanna make sure that they have that chance to socialize. How are kids gonna be in one classroom all day if they don't all take the same classes? Again, that's why we're asking for your feedback so that we know exactly who's coming into the building 
so that when we do go to set up those classes, we can try and pair as many students as possible that have a very similar schedule with one another so that they are all um, essentially in that same class. For the seniors that have a reduced schedule, would they have to stay until three? No, they still maintain their reduced schedule. What time does in-person learning begin? Uh, for that, we have that breakfast hour from 7.30 to 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock, classes start. The late bell still, though, does ring at 7.55. So please make sure that students are in the building by 7.55 because we want to make sure um, that we have that time for folks to be able to transition from the lobby, from that check-in station up to their classrooms in time. If there is a supervisor in the classroom, then do we still indicate that we have to use the restroom by using the bathroom hand signal that we use in middle school? Do we need a pass? For the bathroom transitions themselves, um, our teachers are gonna be using a uh, just a spreadsheet between, between one another so that they can be aware of how many students are out at a given time. Um, and so essentially students will fill out a form saying that they need to use the bathroom so that every single teacher could see um, who is in the bathroom on a particular floor so that we don't have more than one or two students out at any given time. If someone starts hybrid learning, can they stop? Yes. Yes, you can. You just got to reach out to us. Will foundation be providing funds to pay for uniforms being purchased due to old uniforms not fitting from 2019? Yes. Uh, for that purpose, this is why we're asking folks to fill out that survey. We've already been in contact with bits and pieces to have some uniforms on hand so that we can make sure that folks get the uniforms that they need. If they don't start now, can they start later? For that, no, simply because we wanna make sure that we maintain the same cohorts and we also are setting up rooms so that there is, um, so that social distancing is maintained. So if we set up a room that has six students in it and the maximum capacity was six students, we can't add someone else in on the back end. Um, so that's why we're really pushing for, please have that survey in, but please have that survey in so that we can make sure that we really budget those rooms correctly. We're seeing some repeat questions. If we go away for spring break, how long do they need to quarantine for? That should be in the CDC guidelines. I believe it's 14 days, um, but those guidelines do update regularly. Um, and for the, for quarantine purposes, um, for those quarantine purposes, please always check uh, back for those CDC guidelines, always check back for the NJ Department of Health for what states um, are considered, are considered uh, as needing quarantine purposes for the state of New Jersey. Will teachers and staff be vaccinated? Uh, we have provided the opportunity for our teachers and staff to get vaccinated. I know a very large percentage of folks have already uh, got their first vaccination over this past Friday. It was a, one reason why we may have seen a few teachers were out this last Friday. Um, while we cannot compel all teachers to get vaccinated, I will say that a, a large percentage of our staff has been eager to get vaccines. I got mine on Sunday. I'm feeling very excited about it. Didn't even feel a little sick afterwards. Going back for the second round just before we go back um, into the building. 
If you have a student who travels with another student, can they be in the same group with that student? Um, again, that's why we're looking for those forms to be filled out so that we can take so, so that we can take those sorts of things into consideration um, as we build out schedules. Summer school currently is set to support English and math. See a lot of uniform questions. I'm just going to keep going past that as we've addressed that one already. For what reasons would a student, uh, for what health reasons would, a, would cause a student not to wear a mask? Are face shields acceptable? I believe one of the reasons is asthma, but those are clearly outlined on the CDC guidelines. So as long as it complies with CDC and there's the doctor's note that's there, then we're good to go. Face shields are not acceptable alone. Everyone needs to have a mask, um, but a face shield can accompany it. You just can't solely have a face shield. How many students to a classroom? Most of our classrooms accommodate six to eight students with six feet of social distancing between them. Yes, the uniform is the same. Where can I complete the survey? Uh, again, could someone just swing back up to that survey link? So again, it is bit.ly forward slash F-A-H-Y-B-R-I-D. students wear gym uniforms in lieu of their regular uniforms, the t-shirt is fine, but not the shorts. So you could wear the shirt with the regular uniform pants. Can we redo the form if we realize that we may have put the wrong sizes in for uniforms? Yes, please do. Uh, just in your free response, note that that's the most updated form itself. Um, just note that, yep, note that that is the most updated form itself. When is the last day of school? That's going to be on June 18th. Is it all virtual learning in the classroom? Again, Excuse me. That is why we're asking folks to fill out the survey, because we want to be able to pair students with a teacher who they actually have. Um, so one of their period, at least one of their periods would be with that teacher. The rest of those periods uh, would be virtual. How are we supposed to socialize with our classmates if we have to stay six feet apart? Yeah, that's a that's a rough one, right? Like there's not the physical contact uh, because we do want to make sure that folks are safe. Um, but we do we have built in those 20 minute blocks um, in between classes so that there's that space to connect with one another. Um, there's the space for lunch. That's 20. It's a 25 minute long block. Um, there's a space for office hours. That's about a 40 minute block. Um, we built in a good number of blocks so that people can just talk, so that people can dialogue. Um, so socialization, yep, is really going to sit around the dialogue that we have with one another. the scheduled time for remote learning. Again, we are just asking folks to fill out that form so we can figure out how much, so that we can truly just finalize that schedule itself.
at the high school, students stay in one classroom all day long. Yes, with the exception of transition, uh, with the exception of that transition to the gym. We sort students groups by last names. No, we're gonna we're working to sort them by common teachers. Uh, we're working to sort them like so for some of the things that people mentioned, right? Uh, by do you travel to some? Do you travel to school with the same person? Um, but again, that's why we're looking to get that survey information so that we can use that to build out our groups. So I do want to acknowledge that right now the time is 6.30. I still I do still see a few questions coming in, but I want to make sure that I can respect folks' time here. Um, please use the link uh, to continue submitting questions, and we'll post an update with this information on our website uh, because your questions are important, and we know that we know that that's what you're hinging a lot of uh, that's what you're hinging a lot of your decision on. Um, I also want to emphasize that on the 29th. Um, principal office hours, those will be happening. Uh, please be on the lookout for an email from uh, Ms. Williams with an invitation if you would like to sign up. Um, again, it's been great here, like just, it's been great conferencing with students, getting to hear their voices, hear their concerns, um, because when I can hear those things, then we can make decisions with our students in mind. Um, I also wanna make sure that I can make decisions with our families in mind as well. Um, Again, at this point, we are at the end. Uh, we did it. Um, I know that we covered a ton tonight and we appreciate all of your attention. Um, we hope we've been able to answer as many of your questions as possible. Um, and if you'd like to review any of the information that we covered tonight, again, we will be posting the video slides um, and more on our website. Um, again, the website is foundationacademies.org backslash parent dash resources backslash hybrid. Um, again, the information will be available tomorrow and we'll also be sharing it on our social media pages. I wanna say thank you. Um, just thank you again for joining us tonight. We are so excited, just truly so excited to welcome our students back into our buildings. Um, and we look forward to having a great rest of the year. Wishing everyone a great, 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 blessed, wonderful evening.